Hello, everyone. It's a great pleasure to um, have another episode on Heroes of the Harvest. This time joining me is our very own Lawrence Roan. He's a staff of uh, Farmer Veteran Coalition. Uh, he's been working with us for, remind me again, Lawrence, how long have you been working with us? Uh, January will be three years. Good morning. For three years then. So just a year over me, been here for two years, but I'm your host, Diego Laredo, and we're um, excited to share this episode with you. So um, we'll get right into it. Lawrence, how you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. How are you? Oh, man. <laughs> not, a, not a morning person, but here I am. How's the weather in Montana? Uh, actually, pretty nice. It's, uh, you can tell fall has set in, but um, mild and moist, which is good, <laughs> which is good. Shoot, the high today for us here in Texas, <laughs> in Waco, Texas, is 86 today. Oh, so, my. And we're still going to hit the 90s over the weekend, so, yeah, not. That not is, uh, yeah, that, those temperatures uh, are amazing. We're sitting right now, we're sitting at 47, so. Oh, my that's, God. That's <laughs> nice and mild. <laughs> Man, if only we could get that. <clears throat> We'd be lucky if we could get that even in the winter. But um <laughs> yeah, so um I guess we'll start. Just tell me about yourself, Lawrence, so that our audience can get to know you a bit. Well, I am uh I'm a United States Army artillery veteran. Um I uh served during the uh Gulf War era and Cold War era. I uh was also a forward observer. Uh, and one of my tasking and the other skill set I took on uh, was that of a an interpreter. Uh, so I was a German interpreter, DLI uh, graduate and certified translator, uh, which which was great because it came in uh, quite useful as a liaison officer uh, between the 10th Panzer Division and which is the uh, German tank division and um, our artillery uh, battalion um, <clears throat> or brigade, actually. But I exited service in 1990, April of 1991, and um, I ventured into a number of things, but I've settled into this gig of farming, ranching, ag setting, and I've been at it for about 11 years now. Um, I do that, and I am a independently accredited uh, veteran service officer, um, accredited by the Office of General Counsel uh, out of Washington, D.C., and I also sit on an advisory panel for the Secretary of the Veterans Administration. So that's about it in a nutshell, but uh, the the biggest platform and strongest uh, sense of uh, community is here with the Farmer Veteran Coalition with our 50,000 plus members. Yes, sir, which we just recently hit a few months ago. Um, so prior to getting to agriculture, did you have any previous experience? Just uh, when I was small, my grandfather always had a garden. He always grew a couple of uh, hogs in the, mm -hmm. in the country and I had a summer of um, exposure to um, tobacco fields in, in North Carolina, but uh, nothing that we did on our own and the focus of understanding farming and ranching to the degree that I, that I do now. You know, uh, just this past Sunday, uh, we harvested one of our, uh, one of our steers and, you know, I I knew nothing about that uh, before. For yeah, within the last five years, I've been able to take on that skill set. Nice. And um, so, how'd you get involved with the Farmer Veteran Coalition? I know you've been working with us for three years, but were you involved before then as well? Um, I had uh, 2017. I participated in a program called Arm to Farm was with the uh, National Center of Appropriate Technology through yep. ATRA. And um, they introduced me to Farmer Veteran Coalition in 2017. And uh, I became a member 
I applied for the fellowship fund in 2019. Uh, wasn't successful, but in 2020, I was. So I got a um, fellowship award. Um, and then I met Jeanette, the CEO, uh, at an um, agribility conference in Billings, Montana in 2021. We, we uh, met and yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> I can imagine that. It's similar to how I met Jeanette. I was working at a Dillard's just being a cashier and she was one of my yeah. customers. And like I said, we just randomly talked about nonprofits. I said, I was looking yeah. for a nonprofit. She said, oh, we're looking for someone to hire. And I exchanged cards, had an interview within the next couple of weeks, had a job within yeah. the next month. I was like, well, yeah. all right. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy how that happens. <clears throat> yes. So since coming out to a FEC, I know you've been involved with a number of projects, but one of the main things I've seen you doing is um, be a big part of our conferences. Uh, it's our annual stakeholders conference. Um, my first conference was in Oklahoma of 22. And um, I remember you always um, be a speaker. Tell me about your um, your part in the conference. What do you do? How does that go? And how does it feel for you to do it? The conference for me is probably the, the apex of our year of activities uh, with Farmer Veteran Coalition, just because uh, it gives us an opportunity to exercise a number of the activities that veterans are or were accustomed to when we were in service. It has a ceremonial part of it, which means an extreme amount, has a, uh, has a huge importance for me because um, we have a, a missing warrior uh, table ceremony that we do at the beginning of the conference. And it just uh, means so much to me because it reminds me of the brothers and sisters who are not able to be with us, here with us and uh, look towards the future of continuing to serve and farm and ag. And then specifically because he's my uh, first, uh, I mean, he's my cousin, but my brother, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Wesley Roan, who uh, fell in service in April of 2021. So, you know, when we when we do that ceremony, it just reminds me of him and a couple of soldiers that I lost in service and just times of service. And it's a more solemn part of it. But more important, in the military, we all had drill and ceremony. Well, we don't do drills, but we do have that ceremony. So that's important. And it speaks to two of the uh, core root causes of, of challenge of veterans that we all um experience those being uh, a sense of or some degree of a sense of uh, loss of self-worth related to the rank that we wore on our chest, shoulder, or arms, or I mean on our collar, shoulder, or arms. And then uh, the sense of purpose, which was connected with our military occupational specialties, the things we did while we were in service. And then, you know, that purpose transitioned. And then uh, the other thing that I would uh, share is that the conference helps us with that third part that we missed, and that's the connection or the community yeah. of being with our brothers and sisters, being with like-minded individuals who understand a, a core language, and that is of the service to our country and the experiences we had in doing it. And, and that's probably the most impactful part of the conference is the sense of community that you get while you're there. And, um, you know, if, if ever you uh, miss that uh, as a veteran, and I think most every veteran that I talk to uh, does, conferences where you get to experience that at least one time a year. Uh, oh, and sure. yeah, yeah. And it's not on, uh, Veterans Day or Memorial Day or one of these days that someone else uh, picked or that the nation has picked to uh, pay attention to us. It's one we chose and picked to pay attention to ourselves. So 
I, I really, really uh, like conference and recommend it to any and everyone I run into that has served our country. Oh, yeah. I remember attending it for the first time, again, in Oklahoma City. And at the time, I was still part-time with FEC. And I was a little on the fence on whether I wanted to become full-time or not. But, like, the conference was a huge eye-opener for me because even now I still don't have experience in agriculture. And I myself not a veteran, but just seeing how it is and how impactful it is to our members was like, oh yeah, this I need to be here. And um, to this day, like last conference in last year's conference in DC, I was still catching up with folks that I met back in OKC. It's like, hey, dude, how you been? Like, you know, so it's just it's crazy seeing that just unfold. And then now that I'm in the back actually planning these now is just it's crazy <laughs> yeah yeah it, it is just a um there's so much to uh the atmosphere uh the information and resources provided and even for those currently serving and we're not going to be too far from fort leavenworth uh yeah. um and you, you know uh if there are soldiers that are, are serving currently and you're in that window, you're a short timer or you're getting ready to hit your terminal leave window and you're looking for what, what's next, uh, coming to conference gives you a lot of ideas. I wish that when I had, uh, when I was separating from service, uh, that I had known about different activities like these, right? Um, and there are more and more. And, uh, you know, the Farmer Veteran Coalition has uh, partnered with a number of different organizations that have been uh, very, very um, supporting in the effort of, of putting on this conference. And uh, it's just an exciting time to get to see for those who are serving what your potential future could be. For those who have served, to reconnect and to get to, uh, um, yeah, break bread with one another and, and experience conference in a way that few venues provide you inside the United States. And, and we're the biggest, we're the biggest nonprofit that does what we do. Oh, yeah. And uh, um, missing out on this opportunity is amazing. And, you know, uh, I know we'll probably get to this a little bit later, but our keynotes and those type things. Yeah. Big, nice surprise for everyone attending. Mm -hmm. So you've been with us for almost three years. So you've been to a few conferences as a staff member. Have you been to any conferences as just a regular FEC member? No, I, I had never um, taken that opportunity to do that. Um, my first conference was in Oklahoma. Okay, so we shared the same first the, one. The okay. same one, yeah was in Oklahoma and then uh, Washington, D.C. last year. Yeah. And uh, and now this year coming up. Yeah, um, Kansas City. And yeah, Kansas City. Uh, <laughs> I, it's it's going to be it's going to be great just because I think this year, you know, when we were in Washington, D.C., we weren't that close to a pure uh, military setting either. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have the opportunity to engage and uh, provide that that share or that vision, the potential yeah. with actual service members. So this year being so close to Fort Leavenworth is you know, a huge opportunity for those, even those who aren't yet, I mean, if you're a year out, even two years out, you know, you need to be figuring out what seeds you're going to plant in your future, mm -hmm. right? Yep. No pun intended, but, oh, yeah, <laughs> pun intended. But uh, um, come and and see what we have to share, and I'm sure uh, that you won't go away unimpressed, sure. Oh, yeah. So you brought it up earlier, so we'll get into it right now. Um, so the keynote speakers and the breakout sessions, is there a particular breakout session that maybe stood out to you? in the past two conferences that you attended? Because I know we have um, a ton of them. Yeah, we have a lot of them. And uh, I'd say 
the breakout session that that impacted me most was the beginner farmer session, uh, just because it gives you an idea of what the possibilities are. Yeah. Right. And that it makes you aware of the the fact that the veteran, uh, the service member, the skill sets you bring to mm -hmm. farming and ranching in the ag setting are core values or attributes that are very much necessary in farming and ranching. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. A mission-oriented mindset. Uh, failure is not an option. Yep. Uh, there's no time clock on the day, right? Uh, early rise, right? All, yep. of, all, all of those attributes are crucial, crucial in, uh, in the farming and ag and ranching setting. And then I think most importantly is the ability to navigate to the next contingency. So a contingency oriented approach to doing things. So that means being prepared for your plan not to work. Uh, that's what yeah. that's that's what you do in a in a military setting. Because it don't always go like you planned it, right? Uh, and you can't let that uh, let that set you back, right? Mm -hmm. It is the approach of we got something to do here, let's get it done. And farming it's an action-oriented uh, activity, right? Uh, yeah. And in the military, it's the same thing, right? From the, the artilleryman that uh, uh, puts those rounds down range still on target, uh, from the, the cook who puts those meals together to feed the troops, from the, uh, from the uh, medical staff that puts us back together and puts us back in the fight, from the leadership to the uh, to those folks at basic training who help fit us with our boots and our 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 uniforms uh, to get us ready and 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 fit to fight. So from the time we we're recruited, those recruiters that were I was a recruiter when I was in service as well, and then all everyone the whole gamut of of uh, military occupational specialties your core values that apply to your service or the principles, duty, honor, country, um, <laughs> that just falls in line with farming, ranching, and, and agriculture. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and um, I'm glad you brought up that breakout session in particular because that's most of our members. How, like, most of our members are beginning farmers and ranchers. I remember last year I uh, met a guy who... Um, I think I met him in OKC as well. Um, I feel bad because I can't remember his name. But um, he always like comes up to me. He's like, gives me a big hug. He's like, hey, how you been, Diego? But um, he doesn't have any experience. Like He knows nothing about agriculture, but he still comes to these conferences to learn and to just yeah. get to know the other veterans. I know he said he wants to one day go to the Philippines and make a farm there. I'm hoping he's making good progress on that. I'm hoping he'll be at this um conference and maybe next this time I'll remember his name but yeah it's, it's just it's a huge impact it has a huge huge impact on our members it and, does it does yeah and following that um our keynote speakers I know last year we had um Mike Reynolds with Hero Agriculture he did a great presentation to everyone talking about how ag uh, agriculture has helped them mentally with this PTSD and stuff and that's a lot that's the same case for a lot of our members as well. And he will be out this year's conference as well. Yeah, anything you'd like to add to that, Lawrence? Any of the keynote speakers that you liked? Well, uh, yeah, I, I remember Mike's presentation and it was it was amazing. We had a, a, a couple of different um, uh, folks speak, but I think the big takeaway was that uh, everyone that did speak had a message of of hope yeah and one of resilience and and one of gratitude uh for the opportunity to serve those who were in attendance and just sharing a story and so and that applied to everyone who spoke 
But what I think uh, is 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 amazing is that Mike haven't shared his story and his his uh, challenges of of navigating his transition from service and and then life after service. One of the things that you know, and I I really applaud uh, Jeanette on the direction she's taken us is that. What we all need to understand is that, number one, our transition never ends. Once you leave service, people think, oh, you put the uniform up, hang the dog tags up, it's done. I'm now I'm a civilian. And so I, I, so I turned 62 here in a couple of days. And uh, I can tell you, I got birthday. out. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks. So I, and I got out at the age of 29. So over 30 years, I've been navigating this this transition from service. And I can tell you that I just haven't let it go, right? Mm-hmm. It, 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 it won't let me go, yeah. right? Uh, I served 11 years, four months, and 27 days in service. And um, it's the cornerstone of who I've become in my adult life. And it's yeah. provided me a structure uh, that I've missed and, you know, it's hard to find. So I found myself uh, being a part of creating structure. And so Jeanette's provided us with that. But one of the things I admire most about the opportunity of this uh, conference is that she's added another piece to conference. And that is that she helps address the resilience that we yeah. need to navigate life, right? And that structured approach is one that is necessary if you want to be consistent and you want to take out that uh, roller coaster effect, if you will. Mm-hmm. That approach uh, is addressed in our session. It's called RAP. It's the Wellness Recovery Action Plan. It's an evidence-based program that provides you with a structured approach to resilience to help you focus on key concepts of addressing a structured approach to navigating significant life events. And everyone has them, but particularly the veteran needs to have a plan. Oh, and yeah. that's what that's what RAP does. It it provides you with that plan, a structured plan, a recipe, if you will, to approaching those significant life events that you will have to navigate after exiting service. And yeah, her leadership and leading us uh, to that tool of resiliency is amazing. And I look forward to being uh, and supporting the presentation of that tool with the leadership coming straight to us from the uh, intellectual property owner of that tool uh, from Advocates mm-hmm. of the Human Potential. So. Uh, that's awesome. And then our keynote speakers. Oh, my goodness. Uh, we got a, a gentleman, Mr. Bill Peterson, yep. uh, with whom I uh, I worked with closely. Wow. In the early 90s. After, well, actually, right after I got out of service, I had the pleasure of um, or the honor of uh, serving, <laughs> serving, serving the NFL directly as the um, security person for for Germany, for Europe there, and Bill was a a GM for the NFL for one of their uh, World League of American football teams, Um, and he's since come back and just, oh, he'll tell his story, but I can tell you he's a a tremendous asset to our social setting. And then on on the second day's uh, keynote, oh my goodness, um, Mr. Terry Cosby, the Undersecretary of the USDA and RCS, he is one of the fir- uh, one of the uh, pioneering graduates of land grant colleges, coming from a SBU. Mm-hmm. Um, and I tell you, he is a dynamic individual, personality, a great leader, and he'll have a strong message as well. So it's it's going to be a great conference, a lot of substance to the conference and yeah. a lot of uh a lot of opportunity 
to gain hope through osmosis, right? My yeah. my rubbing elbows with your brothers and sisters there. And then most, what I think is very commendable is that there are so many people who didn't serve, but are there to empathize with us, not sympathize, but empathize with us and show their appreciation for us. And, and you know, that you you can't put a dollar price on on what that is it's invaluable absolutely invaluable yeah i'm glad you brought that up because um i guess in my case you know not being a veteran not really knowing nothing about this it's just like you said i i try not to sympathize but empathize with the people there and i'll i'll just do my best to learn from everyone because um for me, the most important part of these conferences is learning their stories and being able to share them to other people. And um, I've been able to do that in a number of ways through just talks to them, sharing their stories on our newsletters. Um, hopefully with this podcast in the future, we'll be doing that. It's insane. Like, we're just the kind of, everyone has their own unique story and their unique reason why they want to get into agriculture. It's something that I would have never thought of because, I mean, to be honest, before I started FEC, it's something I took for granted. Ag- agriculture, um, our farmers, and I didn't think too much about the military. I have friends who served. I have one in, who served in the Air Force and one who served with the Marines. But um, it's just nothing I never really thought of. And then now that I'm here, it's just every year, every, shoot, every week I learn something new just from our members of what they're trying to do. And it's, it's, it's been great. You know, you hit the nail on the head of something that's very important to um, to observe, to acknowledge, and to address even. And that is, in our country, in, in my lifetime and years previous to that, right, uh, back to the uh, mid-1800s, we don't know what it's like to have war on our turf, right? in these United States of America. We've been attacked on different occasions and we've responded, right? And we continue to be, our armed forces continue to be a deterrent for anyone who dares raise their sights towards us in a way of attack, aggression, or infringing upon our freedoms and liberties. So what we all have to be cognizant of is, number one, uh, the fact that we can have podcasts, the fact that we can drive to work, that we can go get our favorite coffee, that we can shop in our favorite store, that we get to select from any variety of different foods and uh, happy things that we want, the type of shoes we want to wear, the clothes we want to wear, all of those freedoms and liberties ride on the soldiers of those who serve and yep. those who have served, right? And and that's the, that's the beauty of Farmer Veteran Coalition. We honor and express gratitude on a daily basis for that service. We appreciate it. And we're that light in our social setting that says, hey, Let's not be complacent. Let's understand that we can live this life because there's someone on watch, right? Mm -hmm. And this conference provides those who have been on watch and those who are still on watch to let their hair down a minute and come in and break bread and fellowship and uh, building and looking towards that future. Because this is one thing that everyone uh, that is a veteran at some point, it comes to them. Our oath never expires, right? Yeah. So we will and continue to serve, whether it's actively or passively. And no one should be or ever question whether there is an answer to any aggression that should ever come in the future, because uh, over 19 million strong. Those are the veterans of the U.S. Armed Forces. We're still out here, and we're still a force to be reckoned with. But uh, we are a part here at Farmer Veteran Coalition 
of making sure that we let those warriors that serve know that um, we have options, choices and options. And a couple of those are farming, ranching, or ag careers. Yeah. And being a member of Farmer Veteran Coalition helps guide you in a direction of uh, beginning from scratch to do that and sustaining yourself, your equipment, and your activities uh, while you do it. Honestly, Lawrence, I, I couldn't have worded it any better than you did just now. The conference is super important, not only for us, but for our members, and we're looking forward to having them um, join us in October in Kansas City, the heartland of America, that's what it's known as. To finish things off, I give you the mic for a minute or two, Lawrence, just Anything you'd like to share for our veterans, whether it could be about an upcoming program that we got that you want to give people a sneak peek or any advice, just whatever you want to say, I'll give you the mic. Yeah. So first of all, I, the first thing I always like to do is keep this as my biggest tool in my personal toolbox. And that is one of gratitude. I uh, like to express my gratitude for each and every member or member to be for your service and your continued sacrifice, because I know that in leaving service, that's just the beginning of that navigation. And then I would challenge each and every one of you to uh, visit our website, uh, yep. get to our resources list, and in those resources list, and, and in our news reel, uh, news listing as well, you'll find a program there called HIVE. Holistic, yep. Impactful Veteran Engagement. And it's a program that Farmer Veteran Coalition has put together to help veterans and even service members understand what it takes to come into farming and ranching from scratch and navigate that journey of acquiring your land, uh, of working that land, of networking with the agencies, that uh, help you do that. And then uh, most importantly, it includes uh, a key facet, and I spoke about it, the Wellness Recovery Action Plan. It provides you the opportunity to take on that skill set and put that tool in your tool bag as well, the Wellness Recovery Action Plan. And then um, the beautiful thing is we have a custom tool bag that we provide as well that gives you, I mean, we arm you with everything you need there to navigate and sustain yourself from that seminar on in beginning and farming and ranching and then networking thereafter to do. And it's a, it's a community-based activity uh, we have a community project. We get to impact the communities and the regions that we have these seminars in the beginning. And this is just the beginning in Montana. And uh, yeah, take a look, jump in there, visit us, and you won't be disappointed. Well said, Lawrence. And I will add that this program is being piloted by very own Lawrence Rohn. So he's ahead of it. He's the one that started it. So we're excited to see how it goes. The tool bag has been handpicked by Lawrence, so we're we're excited to share it with everyone else on how um, it would be beneficial for our members and for our future members as well. Um, I'll add, for anyone interested in learning more about our conference, please visit our website. It's farmbeco.org. You can hit the conference tab and learn more about our schedule of speakers. Anyone that's interested in becoming a sponsor or exhibitor will still have spots open, so please check that out. The conference will be held October 27th through 29th in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, the heartland of America. Um, there's still spots open for registration, so please do that now. There's still spots for hotel booking as well. We have special farmers rates that are uh, discounted for our members, so I highly encourage you to check that out. If you have any questions, please reach out to us, support at farmreco.org, or me, myself, personally, you send me an email at diego at farmreco.org. Yeah, any last words, Lawrence, before I end this? Yeah, any any questions or comments or input or whatever, uh, you can also find me at lawrence at farmvetco.org. And yeah, I can just say rock steady. <laughs>